Hello, today we're on the hunt for some of London's oldest shops and some of the ones that we're talking about today date back over 300 years. This is a pretty wide topic so there are loads of others. I've picked out my seven or eight favourites but let me know yours in the comments. If you're new, I'm Katie, I'm the founder of Look Up London, which runs public walks and private tours across the capital, and I'm a Blue Badge Tourist Guide, which is the top qualification for guiding across the UK. In this video, I'm sharing seven of the loveliest and the oldest historic shops that you can still visit today. And there's a map below in the description if you want to hunt them all down. But before I started, I thought I'd mention one of the oldest buildings used as a shop in London that you can find today. And this is the Old Curiosity Shop in Hoban. This was originally built as two homes, possibly as far back as 1567, which is the date that you'll come across online. Historic England simply says that it dates from the 17th century with some early 19th century alterations. Now, although it shares the name with the Charles Dickens novel, there isn't actually any connection. 30 years after Dickens' story was published, the shop owner of the time renamed the shop to profit from the association. But Charles Dickens would have known this area, so most probably he would have walked past and admired it. However, it's sadly no longer a shop. Most recently it was a bespoke shoe shop, but according to their Instagram post on the 20th of September, they've now closed. Still though, it's a wonderful slice of old London in Hoban. So continuing with shops that are still going strong. The shop frontage at number three, St James's Street, dates from around 1800, but inside this was once a pair of terraced houses built in the 1730s. However, the history of this shop goes back much further. It was established in 1698 by a woman known as Widow Bourne who sold coffee and groceries. If you look up outside you can actually still see an old-fashioned sign of a coffee mill or grinder hanging over the street. The building was taken over by William Pickering in the early 1700s, hence the delightful little alley in the courtyard of Pickering Place, which is a fabulous place to visit and we dealt with on one of my London Urban Myths video. We first get the name Berry pop up in the rate books of 1812 when he paid for the houses. Then the name Berry Brothers and Co, as it was then known, took a lease in 1931. But the provenance is still strong because the man who granted this company, Berry Brothers and Co, the lease, was actually heir of the same man who granted the lease to William Pickering just under 200 years previously. Now, if you have the pleasure to go inside, you can see their famous huge weighing scales, a reminder of their history as a grocer's, and it's also where famous locals like Lord Byron and George Bryan Beau Brummel the Dandy weighed themselves for fun. On a more tragic note, though, they have a receipt framed on the wall, and it dates from the 15th of April 1912, confirming that, sadly, a shipment of wine has been regrettably lost on the Titanic. Now a few doors down you can also find a fun mini museum inside Lock and Co, the Hatters. You can admire famous headgear including Admiral Nelson's bicorn and the top hat worn by Winston Churchill on his wedding day. Now, if you twisted my arm, I would probably have to say that Lock & Co are not only the world's oldest hat shop, but could be considered London's oldest shop. A hat shop was established by a Mr. Robert Davis on this street, St. James's Street, in 1676. Now, from 1686, this premises, number six, was owned by the merchant George Locke, who imported coffee and chocolate and tobacco. It's the grandson of George, James Locke, that combines the two families. He works as an apprentice 
for Mr. Davis and then goes on to marry his daughter, Mary Davis. So in 1765, James Locke and Mary Davis move into number six, St. James's Place, with their four children and they set up the business known as Locke & Co today. In terms of the physical shop and its age as well, Historic England confirms that it dates from the late 17th century inside and the late 18th century on the shop front outside. So now we have some suitable headgear, let's mosey on down and find ourselves a nice outfit. And looking for the oldest tailors, you might well head to the famous Savile Row. Now the oldest tailors on Savile Row are Henry Poole and Co. And you can find them here. Make sure you also look down into the basement to see people at work cutting and sewing. However, the oldest firm of tailors, possibly in the entire world, is Ede and Ravenscroft and they were established in 1689 by the Shuddles family, who had the honour of creating the robes for the coronation of the new king and queen, William III and Mary II. The royal connection continues on the outside of the shop. You can see that they have been granted all three royal warrants. Now this means that they had the approval of Her Majesty the Queen, the Prince of Wales and the late Duke of Edinburgh. However, on the death of Prince Philip on the 9th of April 2021, this warrant has now become void and they have two years to remove the coat of arms. Heading back into St James's, we have a multitude of wonderful shops established in the 1700s. The most famous is probably Fortnum and Mason, founded 1707 by Hugh Mason and William Fortman, two footmen who were working in the royal household. Now each hour you definitely have to look up because you can see the two men appear from the lovely clock on Piccadilly. Um, the clock only dates from the 1960s, but it is rather wonderful. Further along Piccadilly, you can find London's oldest bookshop, Hatchards established in 1797 by John Hatchett. Now originally he set up a shop a little further along Piccadilly, but Hatchett's has been at this location since 1801, and they are also proud owners of a royal warrant. Just behind Piccadilly is German Street, named after Henry German, who was considered the father of the West End. It was him that laid out these streets for commercial and residential development in the 17th century. It's also on German Street that you'll find two of the smellier, oldest shops. The first is Paxton and Whitfield, whose origins go back to a 1742 market stall in Aldwych. This was run by Stephen Cullum, but as the business grew, his son Sam moved to the swankier St James's. By the 1790s, he'd taken on two partners, Harry Paxton and Charles Whitfield, whose names make up the brand today. If cheese doesn't suit your nostrils, you can move a little further along German Street to number 89. This was first built as a terrace house in 1675, but has since been rebuilt in the early 19th century. However, in 1730, Juan Ferminius Flores and his wife Elizabeth set up a shop selling perfumes alongside specialist combs and brushes. As with all of these shops, you really need to go inside them to appreciate the history and a bit of glamour, really. Flores' interior is wonderful. It's a mix of glasswork and Spanish mahogany, and it's actually been refitted here, having been bought from a state-of-the-art display in the 1851 Great Exhibition in Hyde Park. You have many fragrances to choose from, but if you're looking for the iconic scent, number 89 is how you can smell just like James Bond. Ian Fleming was a regular customer here and he mentions the fragrance in his novels. So I hope you've enjoyed this video of London's oldest shops. It really is worth visiting these, so you can use the map that I've added in the description to hunt some of them down. If you visited any of these or if I missed your favourite, then let me know in the comments and I'll see you next time for more of London's hidden history.